Hello YouTubers, Tommy here from Overland Transportation System with another update on building my shelf layout. So let's turn the camera around and we'll get right to it. Well, it's time to begin the backdrop. So what I've had to do first is move out all the train cars from the yard. I hooked a string of cars from each track to a locomotive pull them out of the yard and so they will sit here nice and safe and we will start on this side of the layout oh it's all sparse all those trees that I had laid out here temporarily I had to uproot everything to start the background and as Jan always rightly says sometimes you have to crack a few eggs to make an omelet so we pulled up the landscape and this foam board will come down and I've already got some more masonite pre-cut at 14 inches and as you can see right down here this is my plan I hope it works I, I don't want to screw the background onto the wall so what I'm hoping is that what remains above the layout from the bracket tree that holds the shelves that is the same height all the way around so what I'm gonna hope to do is lay clothespins in those uh, brackets and I want to glue those clothespins to the back side of the masonite and that way the backdrop can just simply slide off and on the layout so together we're gonna see if this idea works so I'm gonna turn the camera off I'm gonna pull this foam down I'm gonna get some measurements from the deck of the layout up to those clothespins I'll transfer that measurement onto a scrap piece of masonite for my my exact measurement and uh, I'll draw that on the back side. We'll goop up some clothespins, glue them down, and we're going to see if this backdrop is just going to simply pop in place. If it does, I already got some nice soft blue paint similar to the color that's here, and uh, we'll paint that blue. What I also did was I took an idea from Cousin Vinny's playbook and he said this uh, plastic is cheaper than you can get any place else so I am going to cut this stuff up into a couple inch wide strip I'll use a, two of those I'll take some of this evergreen probably uh, the thickest one which is 40 which is probably what this thickness is right here Probably maybe it's a little thicker. I'm not sure but I want to make uh, a Plastic eye beam sort of a thing where the straight piece will go behind the seam of the masonite some little pegs will plaster glue onto there and then I'll glue another two inch piece or so on the front and I'm hoping I will be able to put each end of the seam of the masonite inside uh, each side of that little I-beam and that will hold the two sides from flapping back and forth. Together we're going to see if that's going to work. So let me shut this off now and when I come back we'll have some more to look at as far as progress. Alrighty, catch you in a bit. Okay we're back. Not a lot of progress but I want to document each step. So here we see the clothespins right on down the wall, all at the same height. And so my next step is to uh, cut my masonite. Now I cut it into, as you can see here, uh, eight foot long strips. But here's the deal. From this point here to right here, in the middle of this window is eight foot I do not want to use the full eight foot here 
The reason being, the sheet will end here, which is fine, but the remainder only has one bracket. So I am going to cut the first sheet back to about this line in the blind, as you can see, and that will give me three brackets on this sheet. I have a, I'll have a seam and I'll have two brackets on this one. And that PVC thing that we were talking about, that will go right on this seam between these two pieces of masonite. So I'm going to go outside and cut my first piece on this measurement from the corner to here. And I'm just going to lay it there. We're going to take a look at it on camera. Then I will cut my next piece and we'll lay it there. Then I'll make up that plastic uh, joiner piece and we'll try it out and see if it works. If it does, then I'll glue the, clues, the clothes pins and the last step I'll paint it blue. Alrighty, so I'll turn this camera off and we'll be back. Okay, so the two pieces are cut. Uh, the first piece I made 80 inches long and the next piece, I forget what it was now exactly, but uh, you can see here just a slight seam. And that's where I'm going to put that uh, plastic I-beam thing, which I will build next. Okay, so I've taken the piece of styrene. I have uh, put it on the table, used the thickness of my piece of scrap to get my measurement of thickness, drew a pencil line on there, then I'll scribe that line, snap it, and I'll end up with some more of these, which will help uh, be the spacers between the two pieces, making up this eye channel. So I'm going to shut the camera off, and we'll come back. Okay, so here's the one uh, piece for the rear, and three pieces in the seam. Now this piece here, even though it's red, it's going to get sanded and painted blue with the sky, but that will go on top of here and uh, we'll see how that looks. Okay, so I got the piece inserted below two pieces of scrap so that I know where I'm going to glue the top piece on. I got the width on the scrap piece I got a center line drawn for those two pieces, uh, three pieces of white spacer coming up through just to keep me straight so I don't go uh, uh, crooked uh, when I glue this down. Okay. Okay, so it worked. Uh, the I beam, I channel, whatever you want to call it, uh, pretty snug. I was able to, maybe I'll get on this step stool and show you, reverse. I was able to uh, fit it uh, into the seam and here we go and just slide it right on down okay so that will make this re removable I just slide that down that keeps those ends from flapping back and forth uh, I'm right into the corner now when this piece uh, comes off of, of this wall uh, I can either just butt it there or I can do a similar thing with the with the styrene and make an L an L channel for that corner if I want. Um, I'll cross that bridge here in just a second. Uh, but the big deal was that this did work, and so now I need to uh, remove the channel, uh, remove each of these pieces, take my scrap piece, get my measurements from. Uh, the deck here up to the clothespins and uh, transfer those measurements onto the back of this glue the clothespins in that position and then uh, hopefully this piece here and the rest of them will slide right down uh, into those wall channels and uh, I won't have to screw anything to the wall uh, they'll stay right there, and uh, if I ever have to pull them up, remove them for whatever reason, it should be an easy uh, thing to do. Alrighty, 
So I'm going to shut this off and I'll get on to that step. Okay, so we got the pieces removed and numbered. So as I put these around the layout, uh, I won't get confused what goes where. Once it gets painted with landscape, uh, you'll know which one goes where, but I'm just going to number them on the back side. Uh, so it's all off now, and the measurement uh, within an eighth of an inch is consistent. So what I've done is I've taken a scrap piece, I've laid it here on the layout, and uh, up from the deck, four and a half inches to eight and a quarter. That's the surface where the clothespin is going to be against the backboard. So my thought is, if I goop the heck out of the clothespin, and I goop the heck out of the masonite at that measurement, I'll measure down this wall to get my centers. Uh, I should be able to uh, put the masonite back in place, and uh, those clothespins should glue onto the back, and then once they're dry, I should be able to lift the masonite, lifting that clothespin out of that slot, and they should uh, keep the masonite in place uh, relatively secure without screwing everything down. So let's try that out. Okay. Okay, so we do have the backdrop painted and in place, and my uh, styrene filler piece. Uh, after some fooling around, it did work. Uh, the uh, plastruck glue did not hold as well as I thought. Uh, the seam gap was a little tight and it did pop, so I had to take it apart, re-sand it, and uh, after I plastruck it, I also did uh, some uh, super glue just to give it some uh, backup, and I did open up the space in there a little bit so it wouldn't uh, force down between the two sheets, and I guess it's going to be fine. Uh, I did find out one thing here. As you can see, I got a gap on the bottom and a little bit uh, uneven at the top because of that gap at the bottom. I cannot push that down anymore. Uh, this second one, I glued the clothes pins uh, on the back of the sheet while it lay flat on the floor. This one here, the first one, I put the clothes pins in place in the channels. I gooped the back of the sheet, gooped the clothes pins, and I put it against the wall, put some weight against it, and it worked fine. Uh, this second one would have been better if I had a little more precise measurement as to my centers of where the clothespins had to be. Uh, I, was, I was a little off and the width of the clothespin rode inside the edge of the channel as it slid down, which caused the clothespin to twist to the side slightly, which then jammed in the channel, not allowing it to go all the way down. So, what do I do for the rest of the layout? Well, I'm going to try yet another uh, method. I just ordered some half-inch neodymium magnets, the rare earth magnets. I'm going to try E6000, the magnets, on the back of uh, the next sheet and see how that goes. If that, I got a feeling that as long as I am really close within range of my measurement, those rare earth magnets may take that piece and almost snatch it out of my hand to uh, stick uh, to the channels. So I'm gonna give that a try on uh, sheet number three. 
So that being said, I've got to wait for them to come. So I'm just going to wrap this video up and I will do uh, a short part two for the rest of it. And uh, we'll carry on from there. Oh, uh, also you can just slightly see uh, a little bit of cloud. Uh, I don't want clouds to really stand out. So after I painted this blue, uh, I used the old Chris Lyons up in Canada. I used the Chris Lyons blob 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 trip. And I just took some flat white and I made some blobs and took a one inch brush and use a nice soft long strokes. I just feathered the white out into the wet blue and just gave me uh, a hint of cloud. I didn't get into any uh, gray for the bottoms of the clouds or nothing like that. I just wanted to have something in the sky. So I'm gonna wrap this up and we'll catch you on the flip side. Bye bye.